Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We consider it unacceptable for a single citizen in a state to go hungry while, it's, while his or her government pursues other agendas. The context of today's debate operates in a question of states where there is finite agricultural land and what do we do with that land? We have two options. We can either use that land to grow crops which are more amenable to biofuels and then use the output of that agricultural land to be converted into ethanol via biofuel processes or we can use that output or grow crops which are more likely to feed our population. Now, given that context and given that thing, well, uh, given that, that particular choice that governments have to make, we're essentially saying that this debate happens in the characterization of a value judgment. What is a state to choose? What is the appropriate rate role of a state and what are they choose, supposed to choose by means of either incentive or subsidize or even more so, Mr. Speaker, if they have to, legislating against the usage of land in one manner or another. And when we say, what are states supposed to choose, we'd first like to talk about countries with shortages. When we talk about countries with shortages here, we're talking about countries which are unable to ensure that all their citizenry, citizenry are adequately nourished. And we, we think that an adequate a standard of that is set by the World Food Program, which says that every individual should have between 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day, plus you know, adequate vitamins, plus proteins, plus minerals. And essentially, you know, the issue might be either one of affordability or one of accessibility. So there might not be enough food or the majority of the population can't afford it. So in this case, Mr. Speaker, if a state cannot nourish its people because they can't afford their food or they can't access it, a state should not, should not pursue the agenda of bio, biofuel production. What should it, production, what should it do instead? One of two things. Either A, it should ensure that it can it could satisfy the demand via imports, Mr. Speaker, or more likely, and what we're going to advocate for on our side of the house is it uses the land on that state to locally grow that food and sell it to locals, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Yeah. Fundamentally, we say there's states, there's states on both ends spectrum. So if a state can afford to feed its people, if it doesn't have this problem, we're more than happy to let it grow biofuel. So we're talking about states like Canada and Australia. But in the context of states like India or China or other third world states, which have a large amount of its population below the poverty line, but more importantly, unable to get enough nutrition into their bodies during the day, we say it is unacceptable. And the priority of those states should be into making sure their populations are fed, particularly through growing crops that can feed those local populations. Now, our stance in today's debate, therefore, is that biofuel production is a luxury we cannot afford. And I'm going to talk about it on three levels. Firstly, why food security is the most important responsibility of a state. Secondly, I'm going to talk about how does how does our proposal or what the choice we're proposing governments do ensure food security happens. And finally, I'm going to talk about how it ensures sustainable development. The stance or the, the direction we want governments to go will ensure better development. NC is going to talk about the environmental aspect and how renewable energy, at, sorry, at, uh, bio, biofuel based, uh, biofuel based energy is at best a short term solution and definitely not a sustainable one. On to the role of governments. Now, fundamentally, we feel in Maslow's pyramid of needs, uh, to use the hackneyed uh, method that everyone uses in debates, uh, food is the, one of the most important needs. But more so than that, we say because it's the basis of sustenance, which is the basis of life. You are unable to exercise any of your rights if you are not fed, simply because you're either too weak or possibly starved to death. And no one has been able to access rights beyond the grave, Mr. Speaker. More so than that, we say, therefore, it's an important need. But we want to juxtapose it. There are two conflicting needs that come into account when talking about uh, biofuels. One is one of economic growth, and the second one is of environment. Now, why is it more important to feed your people than to have your economy grow? Firstly, we'd like to say in many of the countries where this will even be an issue, most economic growth isn't egalitarian. The money that is earned from biofuels will go to the rich corporations or the large landholders who own the land where the biofuels are. So it doesn't trickle down to the most people giving them the most benefit. But even more than that, we say that the most immediate and pressing need to any human individual is to make sure they're fed before they get a job. That's why many countries on welfare will prioritize food stamps over giving you a check, Mr. Speaker, to get, you know, or helping you find a new job. Secondly, let's, let's, let's juxtapose this against the environment. 
Firstly, we'd like to point out that the jury is still out on whether or not biofuels are a viable alternative. Now, I don't just mean this to throw it into debate as an assertion. If the jury is still out, we have to ask ourselves, is this risk worth taking? Is this a sustainable path that we can take our country down at the cost of not feeding our people that will benefit us in the future? And we say, that risk, that gamble is a luxury we can ill afford. But even if it was viable, even if our opposition has a scrying glass that allows them to see the future, we say, ultimately, environmental needs fall behind human needs. The human need for food, the human need to eat. And we say, in the short term, whatever you do, it's always easier to find food for people if you're growing it locally than it is to fix even long-term environmental problems. People starving to death is a problem we face today. Global warming is a problem we will face in maybe a century's time. More than that, the Green Revolution has kind of petered out. We, you know, we used to have a surplus of food, but as evidenced by what happened in 2008, that is no longer the case in most states. Yes. Secondly, how does our proposal help? Yes, sir. Prove to us how by stopping the biofuel uh, research we will solve the food short, short, shortage problem. We're not talking about research here. We're talking about production, sir. And we're talking when we're talking about food, and how does it help solve it? That's my next point. We say local food production increases the absolute amount of food. Secondly, because it's locally produced, we say fundamentally the prices are on local margins. Everything that's used to grow it is based on local worker wages, local people being paid. Finally, you cut out the distribution. So we say there is a, you know, it is reasonable to believe that growing more food locally will ensure that the needs locally are better met than if you were using them for biofuel. But then finally we say, why does this ensure sustainable development? Firstly we say, it ensures that you have better developed human beings, in the sense that healthy human beings are more productive. Disease is more, is, 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 is more likely to occur when you're in a situation where you're un inadequately nourished because immunity is lowered. Secondly, we say hungry stomachs are the basis for a lot of political instability in many countries. It was the bread shortages in Egypt as well as the pro-Soviet states back during the 1990s that resulted in a lot of the upheaval that happened, more so anything else. Now, we're not saying whether it's a good or a bad thing that Mubarak got thrown out, but we're saying it is a contributing factor to societies falling apart because their people are hungry and because they end up rioting for the most basic needs. So fundamentally, I've outlined to you why it's the role of the state, how fulfilling this role feeds our people and how it helps us in the long term. Feed the people, Mr. Speaker, biofuels can work. We can wait. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, the side proposition depict a very a wonderful picture for us. All the people, yeah. the, the, the country need to ensure, the states need to ensure all the people will, will have food to eat. None of them will, be, will, will suffer from starvation or poverty. We believe it's good, but it's never possible. Even in the, in the places they're trying to, to say, US or Canada, even US and UK or EU countries, there are still people who are still suffering from starvation. And still some, some of the people are still must sleep in the street. So, so it means in their, in their, in what they are trying to propose, it means for the, for the country to opt to sustainability, sustainable way for the development can never be possible, which we believe we feel shameful for them. And then the second point, um, they, they also uh, talk. Uh, they also talk about. I think they misunderstand the, the, the nature of the problem. How the the, the biofuel? Uh, when they, they say the biofuel production will occupy the lands for for group uh, for group plants, which we believe uh, is not true. I, I explain to you more uh, uh, later. And the second thing we, we see is detrimental. The message sent to oh, the sir. countries like India and China because there are people still, still still suffering from starvation. So they they, they should not. They, they they have a reason uh, to forget about the environment. Forget about biofuels. Let, 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 let's do the production first. Uh, so today, as a uh, leader of opposition, I'll do, do a few things for you. Firstly, I'll uh, characterize the root of the, the problem, which the state government they feel, feel to do. And secondly, I'll talk to you what the long-term solution to solve the food shortage, pro uh, food shortage problem. Uh, before that, a few, a few things to address. Uh, let me explain uh, a few rebuttals to address. 
first, firstly, uh, let's look at uh, look at um, uh, the nature of the, the biofuel. It's not like w w what they describe. You, if you want to produce biofuel, you need to occupy a, a thousands of acres of land to do the production, which we believe is not true. But how how they, how the countries they produce uh, the biofuel? It's the, so, so, so most of the countries they use the the, the, the byproduct of, of the food to 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 do to. to to process the, the byproduct of the waste in, in, in factories, so that so those uh, the waste or by, byproduct can can be uh, transferred to uh, to oil or to the other so sources of energy, which can be used by cars, by machineries. And this is how it's not like what they say. If they divide the biofuel, then the, the countries cannot uh, cannot grow food, which we uh, which we, we believe is is an uh, assumption. And these two issues are are, set, are are mutually exclusive. Why? Because firstly. Uh, but developing biofuel can never solve the problem of food, food shortage because they, in any of the countries we believe there are some of the groups might, might suffer from starvation. And then the, the, then the, the second, the right. second thing they didn't prove. They, they also talk about sustainability, but they didn't prove that how they, they will maintain the sustainability by 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 making it, by producing enough food to, to feed the people. Uh, we'll, we'll maintain the sustainability. It can reduce the, the pollution of the environment. We, we say no. <laughs> With this. And then secondly, they also talk about um, uh, such countries like India and China, they are still people are suffering, so they, they don't have, uh, they, they can forget about bio, biofuel first and uh, focus on production, uh, growing, uh, growing food. And then we see th this is detrimental, why? Because for these countries, the problem, the nature of the problem is, is not because, um, uh, because they divide biofuel so that the, the people have, don't have enough food to eat. And then the, the wrong message is, especially for, for now in the world, the EU and the US, they're trying to persuade these countries, the developing countries, to cooperate on environmental issues, to, co to encourage these countries to go green, to encourage these countries to go for the long-term long sustainability, which is with the, uh, and uh, this will, uh, you know, this will pushing these countries far away from what the, the, the rest of the world want the countries uh, to do. Yeah, before I want. So you agree that countries shouldn't use food to make biofuels, they only should, only should use food waste. So you would agree that America's ethanol subsidies for farmers to grow corn, they should stop doing that. They shouldn't encourage people to grow corn for biofuel. Well, we, well, today, what we are talking about, because you are talking about food shortage, food shortage, food shortage, which means it's not simply one or two people will suffer from starvation, but a large group in the country are suffering from starvation. But we believe in this, in these cases, we the countries can always um, encourage the people uh, to encourage them to focus more on byproducts or waste of the plants yeah. rather than yeah. using the using the food we, 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 and the corn or the rice or the greens, which we believe. The countries, most of them, they don't use uh, corns to produce biofuels, but the byproduct and the waste. And today, let, let me characterize the, the nature of the, the root, the, the root of the problem for food shortage. The root for the, for the food shortage in most of the countries, such as uh, African countries or South Asian countries, is because improper uh, farming habits, such as the burning, uh, the, the burning after uh, after. Uh, 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 burning the lands and causing the cannot grow food. The lack of education causes them to are still using the obsolete uh, technology. And these are the reasons causing the productivity is very low. And the countries they cannot grow enough food to feed the people. And then to solve this problem, and then one significant reason is because of the climate change, which is caused by the pollution. Uh, for, 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 instance, for instance, the emission of carbon dioxide, such as the cars in or the factories, uh, the, the pollution uh, they, they produced. And these are the reasons causes the climate to change. And sure. this is the reason why the productivity of, um, no, uh, uh, decreases. Uh, uh, for, for instance, in Thailand, some of the Asian countries, we see the productivity of the rice goes down because the plants simply cannot get used to changing climate. And this, once these changes happen, it will cause the productivity uh, to be greatly reduced. And this is the reason causes a great problem, food shortage, but not, but not biofuel. Even these countries we see, they, they haven't focused, they haven't uh, spent a lot on biofuel, but they're still feeling food shortage. It's because uh, they didn't focus on the root of the problem. And this, we, we believe the government should uh, provide with technology and education to educate the people so that they can increase the productivity. This is a, this is a long term way to solve the problem. And by, 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 do, by developing uh, biofuels, it can reduce 
uh, uh, reduce the pollution, reduce the emission, to increase the efficiency of, uh, of the energy. And in this way, we can slow down the climate to change. And in this way, we can increase the productivity. We, we believe this is the long-term uh, sustainability we, we are pursuing. And the second issue, uh, let uh, move on to my second point. The, uh, the, long-term, uh, the long-term solution, actually I'll talk about uh, in my first half. And we, we believe in, by, by providing uh, technology and uh, educate the people to do uh, to, to, to cultivate proper farming habit, but not growing the land that don't care about the productive uh, productivity. And by the, by developing technologies to stay to salvage the environment, such as biofuels, to increase the efficiency, we believe it will uh, help um, the environment. In this way, it will lead to the increase in the in the in the product productivity. At least it can prevent the product from dropping. And in this way, we can solve the food shortage in the long run. With this, we are very proud to oppose. Hey, Mr. Speaker, if I eat the peel of the apples, nobody say I'm eating the fruit, right? They exactly saying the same, yeah, I yeah. ate the fruit. They said using waste is okay as a biofuel, but this is not the debate on that the issues, right? Yeah. This is debate about in the United States, there's a lot of people is dying, but they just use corn as a source of the biofuel. That is the issue of the debate, Mr. Speaker. With that, I have one argument. I'm going to talk about why, in terms of future of energy security, we have a better like solution than their like policy. I have a three point in that argument. First, why biofuel use? Like, why biofuel not a good choice? And second, even if biofuel is good choice, why there's a lot of alternatives to research the biofuel energies? And thirdly, even if that research alternative fail, why there is more alternative we can save the energy security at the future. And before moving on to my first argument, I'm going to defend, defend some of the case from the Tate. Oh, I think, okay, I'm sorry, like, because they never rebuffed my first speaker. <laughs> I was saying they defend my first speaker. And I'm going to directly to the, but their cases, right? They said, like, we cannot solve the problem because even if they leech, there's a lot of people is dying. But Mr. Speaker, this is not debate about we can save the, all the people in the world, right? This is a debate about how the government must use their resources more effectively and rightly. This is thing we want to debate in first place. Then they say like there's a lot of problems, education, technology thing. This is more long term and this is more sustainable, right? But they ne- they never will but engage with my first speaker's point. The state clearly said if you can feed your if, feed your citizens, this is better to their education. This is better giving the technology. It's giving more sustainable at the first long place because it is the thing power the people. They can be better citizens and more productive. Yeah, yeah, they must sir. engage my point. point then they talk about like there's no sustainable and we must persuade these countries go green. But problem is that's exactly the opposite way. I'm going to give you why they going to opposite way to go green in my first argument. Yes. All right. So your first speaker alluded to sustainability, but you never elaborated how this was going to occur. Are they going to continue with their old antiquated practices and cause drought? No, he clearly said, if practices? you are hunger and if you don't have a, some kind of fight against germs, you will be less productive inside yeah, yeah. your country. It is the same in the education. Why at the like, lunch time people just listen to the restaurant because they want to eat? To study. This is same. If you can feed your citizens, you can make them more productive and more sustainable citizens at the first place. Yeah, yeah. The first argument, why biofuels not a good choice? A. Biofuel use same energy, an engine system, oil energy use, right? The problems of energy security these days is not just by using too much oil. It is more about we to, uh, we try uh, we produce too much waste like CO2 on the air, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Yeah. That is why we need the change of the systems and that is why we need the change of mindset of the peoples. Yeah. The problems of biofuel is 
they're using same engine system as oil engines, right? My help with Mr. Speaker, maybe you can save 10% of the waste, right? But the problem is we cannot change the mindset of the people as well as there is no motivations. Company will bring new system of the engine. I think this is detrimental effect in the long yeah, yeah. term, right? Yeah. Secondly, biofuel is not totally clean energy, right? I don't know what they expect. So let's try to look at the procedure when you produce biofuel energy. First, you must get on the car and you must drive the car with oil and you must uh, like produce a lot of CO2, right? Get into the farm and cutting by chainsaw with oil and putting in load and moving the car to the factory with oil and adding the energy. That time you just produce too many CO2. It is the same as the other engine resources. What can see in the in this argument, Mr. Speaker? Maybe short term need you can decrease twenty percent, maybe. But the problem is in the long term need you are using same system in the oil system. Yeah, yeah. If you can use electronic car in terms of like oil car, you can get more like decrease, right? Yeah. But that need when we can give the motivation to the company. But the biofuel can in the long term need is not nice choice at the first place. Yeah, yeah. Then, even if it is answer, I don't believe because they never prove us, right? There are many ways to develop, right? First, countries doesn't have food shortages like Canada, Australia. Second, countries does not based on agriculture, right? Like the Singapore, these yeah, countries yeah. have these kind of researches, right? And thirdly, non and like suddenly you can use non food like biofuel researches like peel, the corns we never eat. Do you think they agree at the first yeah, place? Yeah. I think they are come I come I they I go with the government. <laughs> and third argument, even if those the research fail, there are a lot of alternatives like solar energies, wind and clean nuclear energies. There are a lot of things, hydrogen, right? These things can be used yeah, at the yeah. futures. And with this a lot of alternative, why do you want this kind of why do you uh, why do you stop feeding people and just putting a lot of investment in this field? I wanna ask the question this to the opposition team. Mr. Speaker, like my first speaker said, people is dying on the street. The proper job of the government is feeding their citizens. It is not about you want save every people in the world. It is about how can we use our resources more effectively and widely. And my first speaker clearly said, they just ignore, right? I clearly told you about, there is a lot of clean energy, and there is a lot of alternative to research this. And in the future, there is a lot of alternative to using the other research centers like Singapore, Australia, and the other countries. We can get these technologies even if we don't, uh, even if we just stop these food shortage countries like feeding their peoples. Mr. Speaker, at the end of the debate, you must compare, right? We can save the people as well as we can solve the problems of energy security in the future. But their argument, just killing people by just giving more energy to the big company or rich people, I don't think that is abhorrent. For those reasons, I'm very proud to propose to this motion. <laughs> Just because today in my speech, I have two subs. Firstly, on the idea on how the side of policy was essentially sent out a bad, uh, 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 sent out a negative message to two actors. Firstly, to um, countries in the in the in the um, inter, uh, international inter, international scene, and secondly, on and to countries in uh, in the regional scene. And on my second sub is on how my. Uh, a change in mindset can only occur with uh, uh, 
I have a change. Change my set. Can never, never, is never gonna occur in their uh, policy. But before moving on to my subs, I have several report, several rebuttals. Firstly, um, this whole idea on how US is facing a very severe food shortage. Uh huh. Tsai Gao has characterized US to be facing a severe food shortage. A lot of people are actually dying because they are all going, to, they are all going corn instead of rice or whatever food instead of uh, crops. That there is, and there apparently there's a lot of uh, people dying in the US. You say that this is not true, yeah, right? The uh, primary reason why these people in the US who are facing food shortages is because it's facing uh, not getting their food, it's because they are too lazy to work. They, they, are, they don't want to earn mm -hmm. the income, and they are not having a uh, place enough. And they're not, uh, they're not actively finding jobs, and, was, and, was, and this is the biggest reason why they are not getting their food. No, because there's uh, in uh, because, there's not, because there's not enough food for them to buy outside. Because they're, they're too lazy to go, go and buy the food, to go and work, to get money to buy the food. Moving to my second period butter, is that how Sai Gao has never tackled on our question on how there will be, how their policy will never encourage longer sustainability among the farmers. Because what, what they basically oh, no thank you. What they basically reiterated is the simple. The simple fact that, oh, because if they don't have food, they'll get uh, less healthy and so they, they won't change. You see that, right? Even if they're policy, that they are now having food, right? Because of how there's a instant mentality that, right, is okay, uh, which, I will answer, which I will further elaborate myself with that, that, right, there's an instant mentality among them, in, in them that, right, it's okay to prioritize other problems instead of uh, environmental they never have the, this uh, change of mindset. No, thank you. And so, with, with, with this, and Really, it's, it's, it's very hard for Sagov never show a clear way uh, how there will be a uh, sudden mindset change how, uh, among the farmers. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Point, okay, sir. Uh, no, thank you. Well, we're we'll going to my third, third, uh, third, 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 uh, third, 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 the only people who are going to ever get anything from biofuel is the rich corporation who are developing biofuel. We see that right. This is um, not true. That right. It's not true that only rich people are benefit from from um, corporate. Even if we are talking about production, where the rich people, uh, the, the rich corporation will earn all the money. You see that right. Now, now at the factory, now at the factory level, where um, product, uh, company, factories will start using biofuel. There's an increase in. Um, Increase in effect, uh, effectiveness, productivity, and this trigger effect to the farmers where they have increased effect, um, effective, increased productivity we will help them they earn, earn better wages. And, and all this trigger effect is um, it's actually helpful to them. And so we don't, don't see, no, thank you. We don't see why there's, we don't see how they can just come and tell us um, how many corporations are earning from biofuel bio production. Uh, okay. Moving on to my um, subs, firstly on the idea on how this if any sending out, no thank you. If any sending out uh, two messages to firstly country, uh, regional countries and international uh, countries, we first we identify at regional countries whereby uh, other countries around the region who look at how when this country is facing a food shortage, they 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 are posting on now prioritizing over by a few priority over environment, uh, environmental environmental develop, develop, um, environmental development okay. they see this country as they see um, this country as prioritizing over environmental issues you know that when they themselves are facing a, a, a crisis of also the poverty economic shock, um, problem also but they also be going to prioritizing uh, their own problem rather than environmental issues which we have to say that it's a very big issue. And when all these countries are now thinking about themselves, thinking about how they have their own problem and how they, how they are now so, uh, how they, now they are prioritizing other issues over environmental, it's hard for such group, group countries to cooperate over environmental issues, which is very important in this in current in current situation. Yeah. There must be cooperation among all the countries on such a, on the issue of um. um and, and, uh, environmental. Uh, before moving on to my 
changes. Even if we concede that we're not being good to the environment on our side, what value is the environment to someone who is dying of starvation? Yeah. Um, answering your view, I, we see that right, when we develop crops such as um, rice or something, we're going to use the buy shortage or the product developed by our field and not um, going to just you know, use the rice or something. And so we don't, we don't see our point on how that, 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 that can always be uh, development of biofuel and also um, growing crops for the, pe for the people. Okay, moving on to my, uh, uh, the second level of my first talk, on how in, 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 in an inter inter international level, we see that big countries such as America and Europe who, who, are, provi who are providing aid to, to such countries who are facing problems. We see that, right? Because they are very big of environment, they have they, they are they are willing to you know provide aid for this country to give crops to you, give rice to you, give whatever food you, you want. As long as long um uh, not if you're pro, pro, um, uh, willing to change, willing to be, um willing to go green. You see right? See this type of mechanism or curse, right? It it is counterintuitive for this policy. Okay, you know it. Uh, um, and you are well, very are willing to provide uh, aid. Moving on to my se second stop, it's on how there will not be a, how side gun policy would not, would, wouldn't help change the mindset of, wouldn't help change the mindset and, and well, just stop the mindset of farmers at the basic level of that use us to farming. Because when we see when we see on how farmers mindset are, their the basic mindset is right, oh now there's no shortage. The government says, don't develop biofuel. We are not going to care about uh, bring green. We're just going to uh, allow you to do, do our farming. You see, it's a you know, certain educated farming style. It, it just um, it plays a, uh, stops the problem. Uh, it doesn't stop the problem at all. And so, side, and so they will only be uh, having the same old mentality with this uh, side, uh, side of oh, protocols. Mr. Speaker, as a farmer myself, this is a debate that goes very close to my heart. Having to make choices. Which do you choose? Do you choose to grow food for people who feed, who need to eat that food? We can get money and sell from or could take the more lucrative subsidies that encourage me to grow this food for biofuel and then make money. Those choices have consequences. This debate is about those choices and the consequences of those choices. The position that they seem to be taking in the debate is one of trying to avoid this debate. Because they also seem to agree that we don't want to use food to make biofuel. We want to use the waste from that food to make biofuel. As NC so eloquently put it in his speech, we can't eat that waste. Then that is a zero-sum game. We're not going to eat poop if that's going to be your alternative, and therefore that's not going to be uh, uh, going to help short the food shortage yeah, on yeah. any level. So they're not clashing with us in this debate, Mr. Speaker. I think the motion clearly says food shortage. Unless they can show us how waste can become food, we think they are losing or have lost this debate. But we think even if they want to take that approach, we think it's a poor position. If they are arguing for biofuel based on waste, we think that they have chosen currently the least effective uh, area of biofuel development, where there's a huge negative energy output from biofuel. Even biofuel from corn has a low energy output. Biofuel from, from sugar cane is probably the highest energy output of 8.1 uh, to 1 in Brazil. You want to make it from, from food waste, and that ties in most beautifully to NC's arguments that you're going to spend a whole lot more energy trying to get so little energy out of some corn husks. Mr. Speaker, so we think either way their case falls. Either they don't clash with us, or even if we take that clash, they're not going to show that this is going to create this wonderful change in mindset or fight global warming. <clears throat> I'm going to respond to the two general areas of argumentation in their case. Firstly, this idea of what exactly is the root of the problem that the first speaker talked about, and secondly, this whole mindset shift mind set shifting the second speaker wanted to bring to the debate. On the, food of the, on, the, on the root of the problem, he says there's actually two issues. One is inefficient food production, and second is the issue of climate change, right? So the first thing of inefficient food production, the problem is that farmers are stupid, okay? They're just not smart enough, uh, they're dumb, they don't use enough human manure, 
Yeah, he didn't say that. I just wanted to use human you know, in my speech. I think it's great. Um, and we need to educate them and technology and all those things. We don't think any of those things are mutually exclusive. Yeah, yeah. House. They haven't told us why they are. But then also then, I think NC responded to those things. And Tate did in his speech too. He says there needs to be priorities. When a vast majority of your population spends all their money trying to just feed themselves, yeah, yeah. where are they going to get the money to educate themselves? Where are they going to get the money in order to get these new technologies, wonderful new technologies that you're talking about? When we need to prioritize these things, we're going to prioritize that takes spend time talking about sustainability and safety of the country in terms of in general, which they didn't seem fit to respond to. Not, not thank you, let me talk about climate change and then I'll take your point. So in regards of whether or not we can make those changes into how farmers are doing stuff, we think we can make those changes. These things yeah, are not mutually yeah, yeah. exclusive, but we think before we do those things, we need to ensure that people have food you know, before they're willing to make those changes. Second, in terms of climate change, so the, the cause of lower food production is this notion that the climate, that the, that the world you know, is, is revolting, it wants us to not eat. We contend that. We think the capacity in terms of Earth's increasing yield has dipped, has plateaued. Tay spoke about the Green Revolution that worked well in the 70s and 80s. Yield increased 200% in the last you know, 10 years, but it's tapering off. There's only so much we can go. The yeah, future yeah. lies in genetically modified organisms, but Europe thinks that's a bad idea. We don't want to pump it into, into Africa. right? So it's, it's contentious. We're not sure how much we can get out of crossbreeding, how much larger can pumpkins get. Right? So there are the, the, the limits in that, in, that, in that area, but also it doesn't match with the growth of population. Yeah, Populations yeah. are growing far faster than our ability to feed those populations. Unless they can show that these things can catch up, that's not going to make it. But secondly, even if we think, and we do agree climate change is an issue, that's why we spent a lot of time telling you why there are alternatives which you didn't see fit to respond to on any level. We think biofuels are not the answer. There's so many other things we can yeah, do yeah. to fix climate change. Yes, sir. Okay, firstly, consistently you have asserted that, oh, yeah, agriculture is important, that no point at all. We really say that it was mutually exclusive for that biofuels research and production were separate from agriculture. We also said in my first speaker, I believe, that it would have been Okay. Yes. <laughs> we'll take. We'll continue this discussion later. Uh, I'm going to say a couple of things. Firstly, I didn't assert anything. I think we argued those things. But secondly, there is a point of mutual exclusivity where currently in the system, food that could otherwise be used to feed feed people are being used in order to develop biofuel. You're right about the research point. Some areas of using this food in order to increase research in whether or not corn can be used to be a biofuel, I will need to use corn. So maybe we will concede some small impact on it. But yeah, yeah. we talked about where other people can do that. You're a fine country of Singapore. Okay, it's not fine, but it's a wonderful country <laughs> that has great investment in research. They have no agriculture capacity whatsoever, but they do all these research in biofuels. They can continue to do that research yeah, in biofuel yeah. because they can afford to buy the corn from other countries and do that. Right. So we think the research will still continue Continue, sir. What you have to tell us is why we don't want to create, put more biofuels into the market now, and why that immediate change is not going to happen. Well, I think I'm giving you too much argumentation. <laughs> secondly, Mr. Speaker, we're going to talk about this notion of mindset shift, which the second speaker talked about. He said we have to change the ways farmers are thinking. Are we going to do that, you know, in, in the local level? And we're also going to do this to tie things stuff with international aid and so on and so forth. In regards to this mindset shift, we say firstly the assumption then is biofuels is the answer. Yeah, we don't yeah. buy that. We think the jury is still out, as Tate put it. They haven't told us why biofuels is the answer. We agree people need to care for the environment. We don't think that biofuels is the only way to do. Uh, we don't think it is the way to do it. We shouldn't be pushing it on people. Um, secondly, we say that, even, that we agree to this mindset shift, but you can't shift people's mindsets when they're hungry. When people see this contract with this court trust, people are offended that countries are spending so much money or, or in these rich countries or even countries that have to make these choices like India and China, people are pissed off that instead of feeding other people, you're spending all this money creating fuel so people who can afford cars can put them into their cars. Those are people who can't afford that. That, that doesn't shift the mindset. That doesn't bring the masses on board to the fight against climate change. Yeah. That, that makes yeah, people yeah. Offend, upset and, 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 and stuck in their own ways that what is immediate is now that does not create more goodwill to the government, more goodwill to find the fight on the climate. And in regards to giving eight countries a going green. We think that's the wrong option, as we've shown you again with, with biofuel. And I think if you want to give aid to encourage other countries to change, do it. Encourage them to take clean nuclear energy. Encourage them to develop solar panels. Encourage them to do all those other wonderful things. What we have given you, Mr. Speaker, we think is a very reasonable policy. We talked about how there's a, there's, there's a 
There's a, there's a, there are options in the world today and we need to make a choice. That choice has consequences. On one hand, we've got these food that we can invest and make into biofuels now. They're put into cars that will give us some kind of improvement on the environment. We said that environment improvement is marginal. Yeah, on yeah. the other hand, we think there's a food shortage. People need to be fed. What do you do? We, will, we, we are willing to make that sacrifice. We think let's slow down, let's move the climate change, or let's do it in some other way. But what we need to do now is feed people because when people are hungry, they need to be fed. Right, Mr. Speaker, sir. In today's debate, I see two clashes with that of the side gov and side op have both addressed. Firstly, what is the best long-term solution for these countries with state food shortages? Uh, the side op, the side side op has never contextualized it whether it's a poor rich country or a poor starving country. So we, we just go with the definition of half of of and is this assumption that. They, they'll be able to provide for themselves, that they'll be able to grow crops locally. We say that that's a false dichotomy um, for, between importing and growing crops locally, and there are better solutions to, uh, to, to continue agriculture as well as biofuel research. Now, the second clash that I've identified today is what contributes to food shortages? Climate change and sustainability is going to be in this, but before I do so, let me rebut what the third speaker said, there was quite, it was quite a beautiful speech, there was a substantial amount of new matter, but, Point, sir. no, please, thank you, let me finish this. So, what, as, as, as there's this, there's, there seems to be this notion that companies will, the rich, the, all the biofuel money will go to rich companies in, if, if, if a country chooses to develop and the farmers will be left poor and disenfranchised. We say that, so, that as my second speaker alluded to, we said that in, it's precisely in times of food shortage that that humanitarian efforts will come in. Will be able, they will show these farmers that that there will be a social impetus for change for them to ensure more sustainable practices, more sustainable, uh, more more efficient ways of harvesting the crops. And it is not mutually exclusive to Saigal's point. Yes, sir. When your first speaker came out and said we should use agricultural waste instead of agricultural products that are edible by human beings, aren't you conceding as well that it's important that people as far as possible get fed? Alright, and I'm getting to that. He also mentioned that in this in this modern age, it's a global village, ladies and gentlemen, that the UN aid has has uh, that the humanitarian efforts are are delivered to countries who are suffering from food shortages that it's precisely in these times of change that people will assemble together, that people will assist each other in, 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 in ensuring that everyone gets their daily uh, that, 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 their, their daily do, their daily rations to survive. We, we, there's this negatively there's this negatively slanted notion that you know everyone's that that, that that people are dying and corporations are just toiling off the backs of, of these suffering farmers and peasants. We say that this is Otherwise, flawed because there's no, there's no. Uh, I, I, in my POI, I also addressed that they at no point did they uh, recommend anything point, to, to assuage us that these these farming practices will continue to be sustainable. Indeed, fact has shown us that they continue. The yield has con they continue to get less and less each year because these uneducated farmers cannot uh, cannot cannot learn from 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 past experiences. Moving on, oh, please sit down. Moving on, we say that. Biofuel is efficient compared to alternative sources. I believe the second speaker mentioned something about electric cars. Isn't isn't it the same problem? You you burn fossil fuels to fuel your electric cars. That is also that is also a that is also a flawed argument. Nuclear energy for farming, really. Okay, so 
con there's this there's this continuing the assumption. No, please sit down. There's this continuing assumption that it will all work out in the end. But again, th there is no there there hasn't been there hasn't been any conclusive evidence that the, that the old ways will work. We, on the other hand, provided conclusive Point, so conclusive no please sit down conclusive evidence and how our mechanism was about to solve this evidence. We also noted that. The message sent by the government. What 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 is the government's uh, by by the government's to protect the people to, to best serve the people? We we also address that in my first speaker. Now, governments are supposed the, the government as 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 part of social responsibility. We say that yes, feeding the people. Of course, it's a basic need, and yes, people. Revolts. It, it's uh, to borrow the, the the example of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. That food is important, but again, this can be solved with humanitarian efforts. It's a it's a short term measure. Whilst we help them with education and technology, green technology, to to ensure better education for all around. It helps them recover faster and it helps them sustain their farms better. And biofuels are an essential part of that. Okay. So, pointer. Yes. Are you saying that we should export food for biofuel to rich countries while our citizens starve in hopes that said rich countries will give us food in terms of aid? Not at all. I'm saying that said food shortage country, let's just call it A because that's really long. We, we, that outsourcing it to countries like Singapore as your favorite example outsourcing it to countries in Singapore it sends the message to other to other the international body that hey the government's not interested in educating its people internet the, this these nations wouldn't be interested to help those who, who aren't willing to help themselves because it's 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 just it's flawed to expect people to Hand in aid without with, without any effort being made on your of your own to develop sustainable practices. We say that um, as as with as with biofuels, uh, side side prop has suggested solar 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 energy, nuclear energy, which yeah. uh, uh, that that is also equally up in the air, ladies and gentlemen. So at the end of the day, I believe that. SiteOp has better identified a long-term solution because, again, SiteGov Site has never came up with a sustainable um, issue of a feeding the people because you know fertility issues and all that, as well as providing long-term fuels, and it has also made a number of assertions, namely how the fact that rich rich companies will profit and then yet they want to outsource it outsource it to foreign nations, foreign corporations, and expect returns for for nothing. So, and, and as well as for my second clash, which deals with climate change sustainability and the, the nature of food shortages in particular. And as such, I believe that our case should stand. Today, the site government will fail because they are inconsistent. Because they, they propose a wonderful principle, sustainability, but they never pro provide proof to us how their solution, how, how they are going to achieve it. Let me, let me show, uh, show to you before moving on to my two classes. What, uh, uh, what, uh, what, what really causes food shortage and secondly, how we are going to solve it. Let, let's see how they are inconsistent. The first speaker came, came here clearly told us and their limited line, limited line. So the the, uh, the government of the states only have one option: you pr you produce biofuel on this land, or you uh, or you grow food on this land. But we, we believe is which is not true because uh, 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 producing biofuel does not have to occupy uh, thousands of acres of land. And they also agree with us. 
And secondly, they, they point out, okay, some countries that like U.S. are using corn, using food to produce uh, to, pro to produce um, uh, biofuel. Uh, so, since, so, so they suddenly they change the direction. They, they mischaracterize uh, the nature of biofuel. But we believe even if some of the countries might use food to uh, to produce biofuel, but we, we propose and we also see we, we encourage those countries facing serious uh, food shortage to opt to um, uh, buy products. Uh, rather than using uh, using uh, food itself, we believe uh, food itself, by corns, are not the only sources can use to produce biofuel. So with this, we believe they fail. And the second point, they say sustainability is is good, and that's what we want to achieve. But under this, this, this all the three speakers, they didn't uphold their principles. They didn't explain to us. They only want to say, okay, we want to solve the food shortage problem, but they didn't tell us how they are going to, even if the food shortage problem is solved, how is it sustainable? By, by, by burning the lands or by burning the forest. Um, and now moving on to, the, so with these two points, they, uh, we believe the site government fail. Now moving on to the two clashes, what causes the food shortage? We believe the site government, they also fail to understand what food shortage. They, they, what they told us is in US, in Canada, or in some, is maybe, maybe even one person, the salary is low, they cannot buy food. Then this is a shortage. That's a, that, that's a, that, that's a characterization. We believe it's not true. The food shortage we're discussing is in African countries, in some of the developing countries, a lot of groups of uh, thousands of people, they don't have access to food. But today, we, 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 even if it's true, even one person is, suffering, is, uh, is hungry, is, is, can be uh, food shortage we're talking about. But we believe in US, in Canada, some of the developed countries, it's not because there's they, not enough food for them to eat. The reason is because there, there are some other reasons, econ economic reasons, they cannot get jobs, they cannot uh, earn enough money to buy food. It's not because, uh, uh, because of biofuel, they don't have enough food. Uh, that's, 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 that's the reason. And then the second thing, we believe by, by stop what they, they are proposing, okay, because they are food shortage, so we stop, we give up biofuel. Uh, but we believe by giving up biofuel, the, the, the food shortage problem can never be solved. And especially what we, what we are trying to tell you is because the changing the climate or the improper, the improper method in, in farming causing the low productivity is the re real reason causing a food shortage in the in developing countries, in third world countries. And this, this uh, if you want to solve the problem, you need to start from the root by, 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 by educating them to, far, to, 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 farming, uh, to farm in the proper way. By, by stop the climate from change. By doing this, we think it's most sustainable. And by, by, by using the other uh, alternatives, such as byproduct to, to develop a biofuel, to produce biofuel, it's also uh, alleviate other problems, such as uh, the, the, the request for natural resources on the earth. We believe it's more sustainable. And, and lastly, we, 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 we think uh, in this way, uh, we will uh, we will solve the food shortage uh, in the first place. And secondly, we, we can also uh, ensure uh, the, the demand for for, uh, for energy. Uh, uh, with this, uh, we, we believe the, the government the government should not opt to give up uh, biofuel uh, so that to solve the food shortage problem. Because even if you you stop biofuel uh, producing biofuel uh, right now, you cannot solve the uh, food shortage pro problem. With this, we're very proud to oppose. Mr. Speaker, this team, the opposition, has spent an inordinate amount of time running away from the clash. The way they talk about biofuel and its relation to food shortages might make you almost think that the only reason we have food shortages from biofuel is because people eat more because they use the biofuel to cook their croak, Mr. Speaker. Because fundamentally, right, they just have refused to clash at every point. This is not a debate about whether when your country has enough food, should it grow biofuel. This is not a debate about after you grow that food that you use to feed your people, can you use your waste to make biofuel. It's a singular clash. Given a mutually exclusive decision on whether or not to use your land, to a finite resource to grow biofuel, or to use it to grow crops, when your people can't eat enough, when your people aren't nourished enough, which should you choose? We've said you choose the people. You make the food, you grow enough food to feed them. 
they have not engaged with us at all. I'm going to do three things in my reply. I'm first going to do a bit of housekeeping in terms of talk, sorry, four things, housekeeping. In terms of firstly, the burden they tried to push on us on the start, and I'm just going to dispatch, dispatch it right now. Secondly, the characterizations that they kept on throwing around. Then I'm going to talk about biofuels themselves, because that's where a lot of the clash happened in the debate. And then I'm going to talk about the more principal issues about which is more important, the environment or sustainable feeding of your people. Now, let's talk about the burdens they pushed, because they started off early on, and I'm just going to deal with this quickly. They said, unless you can feed everyone, there's no point in pursuing it. No. If you can feed more people, if there is a point in pursuing it. It is an absolutely unreasonable burden to expect us to absolutely solve the problem of biofuels, as much as it would be an absolutely unreasonable burden for us to put on you to absolutely solve all environmental problems with biofuels, Mr. Speaker. Secondly, though, in terms of the characterizations, now, this is where it got interesting. The first speaker spent a lot of time, and, you know, an enormous amount of time, talking about how we can use waste instead, we've mischaracterized the situation, all that. If we can use farmland better, if we can use waste instead, we're more than happy to do so. But inherent in that rebuttal, inherent in that response to us is this. They recognize that something is lost here. And they recognize too that it's an awful thing to lose. That is the nourishment of your citizens. Making sure the immediate need of your people not starving is met. And that's the part that they didn't want to get, you know, defend us on. Because we accept everything that makes the world better or makes more people get fed. If your proposal gives us both, we're more than happy to do it. But when it comes to a choice, our side has contended from the start to the end, you cannot choose biofuels. Finally, and then secondly, talk about biofuels. Are they as great as they make them out to be? We came out and said, look, in terms of addressing the, the problem of environmental issues, or in terms of CO2 reduction, we're still keeping a hydrocarbon addiction. This was all in NC speech. Yeah. You're still releasing carbon dioxide. The production process is inefficient. This is not, Mr. Speaker, a sustainable long-term solution. More so, we say it's just a band-aid. And given that it's just a band-aid, is it worth the immediate cost of your citizens dying? But even if, let's just be really, really magnanimous here, even if we accept that biofuels do work. Is it worth the cost? Which is more important? The, the best thing that they said or linked to the idea of feeding people was environmental damage leads to the reduction in food production. Logan responded to this firstly, in, firstly we can respond to say by biofuel isn't going to help this, but more than that we pointed out that there is an immediate need, right? Even if we move towards feeding people more, and I said in my own substantive point, that food, pr food production has gone down. Environmental needs are still far off. We're only going to f face the first consequences of greenhouse warming, sorry, the greenhouse effect in a century's time. People are starving now. Then they talked about removing the focus. Removing the focus on work here in the environment. Firstly, we think there was a huge logical leap here. But more than that, Mr. Speaker, we don't think so. Logan spent time talking about how, if anything, the focus is going to be moved if you start using food for biofuels. If you tell people you're starving so that we can keep the earth green. We accept, Mr. Speaker, that there are other problems in the world and we do need to work on solving them. But our priority as a state is to make sure our citizens are nourished and fed. We still stand proud in, in propositions. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.